I'm super excited to have our first guest, the longest tenured broadcaster in Philadelphia now. So let's go to the Barb Charlie Davidson Sports Hotline and welcome in the legendary radio voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, Merle Reese. Good morning, Merle. Morning, how are you? Merle, uh, we are excited for Eagles football. Of course, we can hear you and Mike on the call right here on 97.3 ESPN, but we're happy to have football back and to listen to you. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm excited about football, too. I'm not pleased with what we saw the other night, but that's another story. Merle, you've been around, I guess you what, you start your 44th year this year in the booth? 45th. 45th year in the booth. You've seen a lot of coaching staffs, a lot of uh, different personalities. Tell You know, you're down there at practice. You're, you're, you're close to the team. Tell, talk to us a little bit about Nick Sariani and the new coaching staff, your, your, your thoughts on them. No. Well, I think they're very bright. I think they're very enthusiastic. Uh, they are, are inspirational. It's a good staff. It's a very, very good staff. It's a bright young staff, a lot of new ideas. Uh, I have confidence that uh, Nick Sirianni is going to do a good job. And I think that uh, Jonathan Gannon, the defensive coordinator, is another guy with a lot of good ideas. So I think the coaching staff is is good. You have uh, you have experience on there, too. You have Jeff Statlin, one of the best offensive line coaches in football, who has been with the Eagles since 2013. So it's a, it's a good staff from top to bottom. You have Brian Johnson, who was the offensive coordinator at Florida last year, and somebody who has known Jalen Hurts since he was four years old. So I think the, the staff of this team is very, very solid. Uh, Merle, I've had several uh, former Eagles on this program, from Dick Verme- head coach Dick Vermeil to Ken Dunnick. We've had, we've had Harold Carmichael, John Bunning, uh, Bill Berge over, over the course of time. And they, they all talk about the, the practices in the preseason, how, how, how it's changed so much. You know, Dick Vermeil's practices used to be, what, three, three a days and banging each other. Today's football is a lot different. Do you think it's help, help football or hurt football that the, the practices in the preseason aren't as tough? Well, I mean, you have to realize that when Dick Vermeule uh, had those two-a-days, I don't remember ever having a three-a-day, but when he had those two-a-days, but they were two-a-days with pads, he had 120 people in camp. Now they are limited at the very beginning to 90. So that's, that's 30 less. So you have to be a lot more careful with what you do. Uh, they do not tackle at camp, um, and maybe that's because they don't need the extra injuries. My problem is I don't like the way they use the preseason games. I feel the regulars need more work in the preseason games to get ready for the September 12th opener against Atlanta. I don't like the fact that, and I'm, that this is not a criticism of the coach. This is just my opinion. I think that Jalen Hurts I felt going into the preseason that he needed five quarters of work in these preseason games. I would have given him a half in the first game. Uh, Of course, in the second game, he got six, so you can't. uh, I don't know what they would have done. Uh, And then coming up in this Jets game this week, I believe he needs at least a quarter. And if you don't feel that he's comfortable and ready, let him go into the second quarter. And if he has to play a half, he plays a half. I saw Patrick Mahomes, yes. an elite veteran, play almost a half the other night. Kyler Murray played. Roethlisberger played. Jalen Hurts has only had four starts in his entire career. I think he's bright. I think he's talented. But there is, they talk about the fact that they're having these combined drills. Last week they did with the Patriots, this week with the Jets. I think they're great, but they're not games. Only games are games. We're talking with Merrill Reese, legendary radio voice of the Philadelphia Eagles. Merrill, you, you, you took the thoughts right out of my head. I did watch that game the other night with Andy Reid's Chiefs uh, against you know, Mahomes against Murray, and you're right. They, 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 the offensive line, the first offensive unit played most of the first half, and I think – They did. And you know what? Mahomes didn't look very good. Mahomes was off target. He ran a little through a bad interception, which just tells you that even the best quarterbacks – need to get the kinks out during the preseason. Merle, talk about, uh, talk about Jalen Hurts, uh, if you will, a little bit. You, like you've, you've seen a lot of quarterbacks come and go. You can see the way, their demeanor. I know you probably, you probably watch everything from the way they interact with, with their teammates, the way they handle the media, the way they talk to you. What do you, how, do you, how do you view Jalen Hurts 
as the starting quarterback. By the way, I don't think he's been named the starting quarterback yet, but you know he's a starting quarterback. Yeah, um, it's an interesting question that you ask. Uh, I've got to be honest with you. I've never met Jalen Hurts. Oh. Because of the COVID uh, restrictions, last year he was a rookie, and we were never on site. We were on the sidelines for the preseason uh, workouts, but we were never allowed into the locker room. We never had any one-on-ones. And as we sit here, uh, I still have never had one personal word to Jalen Hurts. I've watched him every day at the training camp. Uh, I've gotten to uh, see the way the team reacts around him, and, and everything I've heard is positive. But uh, from last year's rookie class on, and, I, and not just me, but every member of the media, none of us have met these players in a in a one on one situation. Well, and I think we've that a lot of Zoom. We've done a lot yeah. of virtual press conferences and that kind of thing, but it's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. And I, I know. And speaking of the preseason. I mean, last year we didn't have a preseason, and you saw saw the effects on the team. There was a lot of injuries. Uh, obviously, we know about the, the the situation with Carson Wentz and his uh, his his lackluster performance last year. Um, I think the preseason is very important. I think it's a shame that you can't interact with the players, though. Well, there are reasons for that, yeah. and that's you know, even though I've been vaccinated, and most of them have been vaccinated. Uh, they are keeping everybody at arm's length. Merle, how hard was it you, for you to call the games with hardly anybody, anybody in the stands last year? <laughs> Not hard, uh, because we were in a situation where we had a, a good vantage point, and they were piping crowd noise into our headset. So it gave you the feeling. Now, is it the and then they did open it up to a limited amount of people, yeah. but uh, it's it's not the same. But uh, it, the, the degree of difficulty didn't become greater. And then uh, the road games, we didn't travel, but uh, we had six different screens to work off of. So it was u- unusual. But uh, as a professional, you learn to adapt. Hey, Merrill, it's Josh. I wanted to ask you about the rookie wide receiver, Devonta Smith. You get to spend each and every Sunday with Mike Quick next to you, one of the greatest Eagles receivers of all time. So when you're watching Devonta Smith, what have you seen from him? Is what has Mike Quick said to you that stands out to you about the rookie wide receiver? Well, we're both wild by him. I watched him throughout Alabama, and I used to say, "Boy, wouldn't it be amazing if somehow the Eagles could get him?" But I, I never thought that was possible. But I think he's going to be a great player. I really do. He just got his feet wet the other night on a few plays, but oh, actually most of the half. But he didn't have that many balls thrown to him. Uh, give him a little time, but he's. He's going to be a great player. There's no doubt about it. He's got speed. He's got leaping ability. He may be six feet and a half inch, but he has the, the wingspan and the catch radius of somebody 6'4". He's going to be a star in this league. There's no doubt about that. And Mike believes that very strongly, and so do I. We're talking with the radio voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, Merle Reese. Of course, you can hear Merle and Mike's call on the Eagles broadcast right here on 97.3 ESPN. Merle, looking at this team as a whole, what what aspect of the team, what positions were you most concerned about going in, and have have you seen have they addressed that so far this year in the preseason? Well, I think they have, uh, in the sense that I thought one of the areas that you had to bolster was corner, and they brought in Steve Nelson to be the other corner with Darius Slay, and he looks very good. And they have a rookie that they drafted, Zach McPherson, out of Texas Tech, who had played some at Penn State, uh, who looks promising. And Avante Maddox can move into the slot where he is more natural. So that was one area that uh, concerned me. I'm still concerned somewhat about the depth on the offensive line. I like the fact that uh, Lane Johnson and Brandon Brooks and Jason Kelsey and um, Isaac Ciamalo and Jordan Mailata are, are there right now. They're ready to go. But uh, that's that's one unit. Behind that, I, I, you have you have a little bit of depth. But those guys, to be the team you want to be, those those starting that starting group has to be healthy. Merle, the uh, the NFC East last year wasn't a particularly <laughs> a tough competitive uh, conference. I mean, division in football. Do you see a, you see a, an improvement in the in the division, or you think the whoever wins the East is going to win it with say like eight and nine record or nine and eight record? I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, it, it's impossible to tell. We only see the Eagles. We don't even know about that right now based on what we see. Um, uh, you know, some people like the Giants. 
but the Giants, the Washington football team that can't even figure out how, how to have a nickname, <laughs> and, and, the, and the Dallas team, they all have their problems. They all have their question marks. Dak Prescott, who was hurt all of last, most of last year, has a shoulder issue yeah. right now. So I, I don't know. I, it's so difficult to tell at this point. Uh, I was calling them the NFC least last year, and that's what they were. And and going in, I still think they're probably the weakest division in the NFL. And I don't think it's I, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that the Eagles could be competitive in the division throughout the season. So we'll wait and see whether that means nine wins or eight wins or seven wins. Who knows? Well, we'll know better by the end of September. And you know, you look at the you look at the NL East and Major League Baseball. The NL East going into the season was supposed to be one of the toughest uh, divisions in baseball. Look how that turned out. <laughs> well, uh, uh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> from that Phillies loss in the ninth inning last night. <laughs> Watch the whole game, Earl. Talk about a devastating loss. I feel bad for Aaron Nola. He pitched such a gem, you know, all the way to the ninth inning. Yeah, but uh, that. that that's that's like saying the operation was a success, but the patient died. <laughs> well, Merle, I got to tell you, we I, I just listening to your voice, hearing your voice over the airwaves, bring warms our heart. We get really excited for football. We look forward for your forty fifth uh, year calling the Eagles right here on ninety seven three ESPN. Merle, thanks so much for taking time on Sunday morning to talk with us. Thank you. It's nice speaking with you guys. All right, there he is, the legendary radio voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, Merle Reese, joining us.